Hi everybody, it's Steven here for The Idiot Quilter and today I'm doing something a little different from my other videos. I have a new setup in my sewing room as far as video uh, recording is concerned. I have a couple of cameras and I have figured out a way to relatively seamlessly move from one camera to the next camera. So this is sort of my premier new setup when I'm doing this video. And what I'm going to talk about today is a class I'm about to take but I want to get a head start on it and it's doing this pineapple quilt now the pineapple quilt let's put it up here so you can see it there it is this is a pattern that comes from the Mr. Uh, Missouri Star Quilt Company it's a free download so you can download this and as I said it's called the pineapple uh, quilt now in order to do this particular quilt you will need a special tool uh, the special tool is this it is called a pineapple trim to tool and I'm going to show you how you use this to create the blocks and I'm going to show you what the blocks look like in a second that I'm creating this tool you can get on Amazon or you can probably get it at um, one of your favorite online quilting stores or look around in your own quilt shops in your own town you might be able to find it one word of warning on Amazon.ca Canadian they want $55 for this um, my quilt store had it though for $37 so not everything on Amazon is often cheaper we will come back to this in a few minutes now I want to show you what the block looks like I'm using Northcott Stonehenge fabric uh, most of this is from the solstice collection which they just came out with uh, you can do this with anything and you see the center square uh, in the class that I'm taking the instructor has done some fussy cutting to put an actual uh, picture kind of a thing in the center of this. I decided I didn't want to go that route. Um, I love the Northcott Stonehenge line of fabric, so I thought I would do it this way. I've already made two more squares, and the finished squares come out at 10 and a half inches. Well, that's the finished square but when you get it into the quilt it's going to measure about 10 inches so these are 10 inch blocks when they're completed um, and I think it's going to be very dramatic now according to the instructions there's going to be four blocks across and five blocks down and they say the final measurements with a border is 46 inches by 56 inches so that's a, a good size throw um, now if you were not to use the tool for this it could be a little bit more complicated uh, the tool once you get used to using it uh, helps you to build the blocks very very fast in the Missouri Star quilt uh, pattern they call for a five inch square so a charm pack or a couple of charm packs I didn't do that I cut my own strips um, so out of all the fabric with the exception of the last fabric I cut one and a half inch did I say two inch I meant one and a half inch strips width of fabric get them all in here in the shot okay um so you just cut a whole pile of these um, I'm not sure how many you need it doesn't really tell you in the instructions I could figure it out though from now but I'm too lazy to so I didn't do it just say I would get get at least a meter meter and a half of each of your fabrics now before I started this I did figure out what colors I wanted to use and I'm just going to switch cameras here for a moment and you can see in front of you my fabrics that I'm going to use and I've already cut them into two and a half inch uh, strips I've labeled them round one, two, three, etc., up to round nine. That's how the instructions lay it out for you. They have some cutting instructions at the beginning, and then they do it by rounds. Round one, round two, round three, round four. They tell you what to do. Um, and it, once you've done one of them, it's really quite easy and quite fast. Now the beauty of this also I'm finding is that you don't have to have um, a set amount of fabric for each one of the strips. What I mean by that is, if you notice here, I'll just put that down here. If you notice here, we start with a center square, 
Then we have background fabric. You'll need quite a bit of the background fabric. I would suggest you buy two meters, at least a meter and a half, but I always like to go for more so I don't run out. And if you got stuff left over, I always figure what the heck, eh? Uh, it goes in your stash. You'll use it someday. Um, so you can see my background fabric is the white dot fabric that I'm using. And that's pretty much set in every other round. So you have the center square, which is a two and a half inch block. You will need 20 of these. And you will see that mine vary in color because I'm using a gradient fabric from Stonehenge. And after I've said that, well, really, there isn't a heck of a lot of difference between these ones. But that's okay because there will be. Because as you can see, my little two and a half inch square right here, okay, is a lighter blue. And that's okay. I like that for variety. Um, so as I said, you'll cut all of these into one and a half inch strips, quite a, few, quite a few of them, to get started. And then with the exception of round one and round two and round three, all of them are basically the same length from there on in. The last one is actually a two and a half inch strip because that's important. You'll see why when we get to that step. You don't have to be exact on the length, just enough that, and I'll take you back to my sample finished block. You're going to be overlaying them. And so they just have to be long enough that they extend over the edge of each round so that when you trim it, you have material there for it. You'll understand that too when I start using the ruler for this. So I have all my pieces pre-cut for this demo. Now, if I was doing this and it wasn't a demo, I would just simply have the strips and as I need uh, a piece, I would go to the strip and rough cut it uh, just with a pair of scissors um, for the length that I need. I did use my Stripology ruler. I'll show it to you. This is a wonderful device if you're cutting strips. It has slots every half inch and since I needed one and a half inch strips, I squared off the edge, went to the one and a half, zip uh, three, zip four and a half, zip, etc. And it's very easy to cut strips. However, if you don't want to bother cutting strips, let's put that away, you can go ahead and uh, buy a jelly roll or a strip pack. If you can get a strip pack with one and a half inch strips, that would be good. Um, I don't know if there is such a thing. I'm a bit of an idiot on that. I've never looked for them. Most of the jelly rolls that I have seen come in two and a half inch strip form. And I can tell you this, I would not want to take two and a half inch strips, pre-cuts, and cut them down to one and a half inch. I think that would be more of a pain than just simply taking your yardage and cutting your one and a half inch strips from that. So once you have those all cut out and you know which fabric you're going to use for which round, then you can start building the quilt. So let me switch over again. And so that's what I'm going to do. I am going to readjust my camera settings here so that you can see uh, me sewing and pressing and cutting. And so I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so I have round three, which is background, already sewn on here. And again, it looks really wonky, but don't worry about that. Now, this time with the ruler, we're not going to use the little squares that are marked on here. We're going to use the white diagonal line, which, trust me, there's one there. I know it's difficult to see. And on either side of that are two white dashed lines. So you take this edge of your ruler and you set the di diagonal at the top. And what you're doing is you're taking those dashed white lines and you're lining them up with uh, the round number one of the border in here. You're lining it up on either side and you're lining that edge with the edge of your fabric that's below. Now you'll notice this because there's actually a little hole here. And when I first did this, I thought that I made a mistake, but no, I did not make a mistake. That's exactly what's supposed to be there. So when you have it lined up, you just zip off the corner and you do this again. So we have this center line putting it across the diagonal of the center square lining up your dotted white lines with the seam allowance for round two 
pull it down so you get the edge of the fabric that's right there you can see it I know it's difficult to see it on video but trust me it's there lob that off and do the same thing all the way around for the four corners once you've done it a few times there's no problem and our last piece and so there we have the next round and again let's give that a good press and you can see how our seams are all staying very flat and this is basically the procedure you will do for all the other rounds until you get to the last round and that one's got a little bit of a special uh, trick to it so I'm going to do the other rounds and stop when I get to the last round and show you how that works I just want to show you something about this round that I am doing you'll notice that the pieces now are the same length and that's going to carry on right up until the ninth round but before, these were overlapping with the ones on the edges, but now there's enough space that I don't have to worry about having to go after I sew two on and going over to my uh, pressing that and pressing those. I can do all four of these at once because they, do no, they no longer interfere with each other, which will save you a little bit more time there as well. So I thought I would just show you that so that you would know. I, I think too, I'm gonna to take this over and I'm gonna show you um, my pressing of it, it's the same as the others, but I also want to show you again uh, which part of the ruler you're going to use for this round, and I believe we're at round four right now, so let's just finish sewing this strip on. Let's take it over to our pressing mat. Same procedure, press the seams, or uh, set the seams, and then just open it up. Again, it's going to look really wonky. First time that I did this, I thought I was making a huge mistake. Actually, I did make a huge mistake. I'm going to talk about that near the end of the video. Okay, let's get this out of our way, bring in our mat, or not our mat, bring in our ruler. Now, this is round four. So on round four, there is a square on here, on the ruler, that says round four. And again, you just do the same thing. You line that up with your center square. Get it so there's a point exposed here yes right here and we're just centering that on the square in the center I check the edges here if, to make sure that I'm at the edge of the fabric so I, sometimes you have to do a little fudging not a lot though now if the center square has been made square to start with that's very important if it's way off your whole block is going to be off if it's exactly the way it should be or very very close I mean can you ever be perfect I don't know I'm not but then I'm an idiot probably experienced quilters would have no problem with that and I don't know if you can call me experienced I've got a year under my belt now enjoying the trip okay there we go let's get those out of our way And so there we have the fourth round. So I'm going to just go ahead and put the next four rounds, because it's basically the same thing. You use a square on the colors to center it up. You use the 45 degree line and the dotted lines for the backgrounds. Um, and when I get up to round nine, I'll come back and show you what to do next.
So I've done my eight rounds and now we're coming to the last round. And the last round are actually two and a half inch strips by five inches in length. And they're going to be attached to each of these pieces just the way we've attached the other pieces, but the cutting is a little bit different on those. And that's what's going to give us the final quarter, corners of our block, as you can see here in my finished one. It's going to give us these finished corners. So I'm going to take them over to the machine and sew them, and then we'll get this finished. Okay, so we're back at the sewing machine, and I'm going to sew these two and a half inch by five inch pieces onto the ends of the colored strips and we do it the same way as we did with all the other rounds. Now, of course we're putting right sides together, quarter inch seam allowance, nothing has changed there. I think you could see how you could, you know, do all your pieces, uh, do the rounds by chain sewing. And I may give that a go. I don't suggest starting right off with that though, because this can be at first a little confusing, but once you get into the rhythm, it's not difficult at all. And again, I just rough cut with a pair of scissors these strips. I didn't rough cut them when it came to the two and a half inch. I used my stripology ruler for that. And of course here you could use a jelly roll, but I don't know if it's worth it because, unless it has colors that you really like, because you don't use that many pieces of this. There's 20 blocks, four, so you need 80 strips. Well, maybe you do want to use something like that. Okay, let's take it and press it. Same method as before, we'll set our seams. And then press them open. Make sure they're pressed towards, away from the center. Again, we have a very wonky looking block here with these pieces on the end, but you'll see how these square up when we use the ruler in a moment. I'm just flattening out my seams. What's really nice about this block is that all of the blocks, all of the seams are very flat. Okay, so now we've got this. So we take our ruler and this time we're going to use the and let me just check the instructions here I don't want to tell you the wrong thing so here you're going to take the centering square round 8 as it's marked on here and you're going to get it lined up now this is the tricky part just you have to be patient. Look at what, there we go. So we want to cut that corner. Let's move this up so you can see a little better. So I'm centering the square. It's called round eight. And I'm just looking at my edges here, making sure that my ruler comes to the edges up along here and here. So that means it's a little bit off on the sides of the square here, but it's pretty much right on at the top and bottom line. And going to lob off our corner. Let's do that a little bit better. We're just going to swing it around. Put in that center square. Watch my edges at the top and on the side. Now you will find, or I'm finding anyways, and this may have to do with me, but this is not dead accurate 
on here. So basically I'm using my edge pieces here to do my squaring. I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it, but that's how it's been working so far. It's working out okay, I think. Now this one's a little sneaky here. I'm not getting that lined up perfectly. Okay, that's all right. I've got one straight line in here. Okay. And the last corner. get rid of this out of our way and let's give this a final press now if all goes well this should be a ten and a half inch square which means that when it's sewn into the quilt it's going to be a 10 inch square so I'm just giving it one final press make sure everything's going outward from the center okay let's do a quickie measurement here all right, you can't see that. I'll do it. Do it up here. So it is starting at seven and a half line, moving up to the 18. So that's ten and a half inches that way, and slide it over here so it's at zero mark. And are we square? We are a little off, but we're ten and a half inches. We're just a slight hair eighth of an inch maybe not that much so I think I can live with that so what happens when we lay this out well let's take a look here let's make some room so you can see what this is going to look like now one thing I've noticed when I sew this together I want these points to match up and they're not matching perfectly here but if I turn this around I can find a better match like that is a better match there let's just go down here so you get the idea of a quarter of it those ones not quite so that's one thing I'll have to be aware of when I'm sewing this together of course it will match up if I match up those points when I sew it then when I square up the whole quilt, it'll be fine. Okay, that gives you an idea of what it might look like. So I'm sorry, let me move this up a little bit further into the shot for you. And there we have it. So that's a quadrant, if I want to call it a quadrant. It's four across and five down of each block. So picture that. I think this is going to be a dynamic quilt when it is done. Um, I may want to move this around a little bit more because those pieces look a little bit too much the same and I have that choice to do that. But I think it's going to work out pretty good and it's all using this handy dandy little pineapple trim tool. So as I said, if you're interested in the pattern for this quilt, it's a free one. Go to Missouri Star Quilt and look for the pineapple uh, quilt pattern. And they also sell the tool, but as I said, you might be able to, get, able to get it at your local quilt store, or you might be able to get it on Amazon. Well, I know you can get it on Amazon, but just watch your prices uh, for that. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Idiot Quilter. A little bit more sophisticated, I think, than what I've done before, thanks to my new camera setup. And so I will show you the finished quilt when I get to it in a few weeks' time. So in the meantime, happy quilting! 
Almost forgot. One more thing. When I first started working on this quilt and trying out the blocks, these were my first two blocks that I created. And they look fine, and they are fine, except I sewed these using my larger machine, my Janome 15,000. And then I thought, well, that's not the machine I'm actually going to be building this quilt on because it's going to be in a class, so I'm going to be taking the smaller machine because it's lighter. So let me get rid of one of these. This is the one on the Janome 15,000. This is the one on my Janome uh, MC100, the smaller machine. Can you see a difference? There is a difference. The quarter inch seam allowance is not the same on the two machines. I actually ended up with a nine and a half inch. Let me just double check that down here. No, it's actually a 10 inch, 10 inch square on the larger machine on my 100. This is a 10 and a half inch square. Now, I could make the whole quilt using the large machine. It's just going to be slightly smaller. But because I'm going to be using this machine in the class, I want it to make all of my squares the same. But that's just a reminder that you need to check your quarter inch seam allowance. Don't take it for granted before you start a project to make sure that it actually truly is a quarter inch seam. I have a feeling this is more set at a scant, but I'll have to check that out to see. Um, the other thing too to note is if you start a quilt on one machine, use the same machine to finish the quilt just to keep everything consistent. Just a little tip that I thought I should add uh, to this video. See you later. Bye-bye.